five. Wind two six zero degrees one five. India Alpha Charlie two to taxi. Bravo Lima Fox two to taxi two to hold. Thank you Fox. Romeo, Mike Bravo, 3 DMA descending to 6,000. Alpha Echo This is the story of Australia's aviation industry. The story of the busy world upstairs, and of the men, the machines, and the methods that keep you flying safely. Every year, Australia's internal airlines carry nearly three million passengers over one of the largest and safest aviation networks in the Western world. Every day, a steady stream of passengers moves into the nation's 600 aerodromes. Some come by air, dodging the congestion and clamour of the roads. Some come by bus. Others prefer to do it themselves. For many Australians, flying has become almost as familiar as the daily bus or train ride to work. But there is always someone who is flying for the first time, eagerly or anxiously anticipating the experience. Some are simply in a hurry. Others fly frequently, with an easy confidence born of experience. A confidence well deserved. For Australia is a land of distance and isolation. A vast, challenging continent of three million square miles where towns and settlements are separated by great distances and natural barriers that defy land transport. A land made for the aeroplane. A land of contrast. A land scarred in the southeast by a chain of rugged mountains that pinned the early settlers to the eastern coast and hid the rich rolling sheep and wheat plains beyond. A mountain chain whose ruggedness and latent power has been harnessed to provide the power and water necessary for progress. A land of busy, bustling industrial centres, forging the sinews of a great and growing nation. of sun, surf, and sand. A land of modern growing cities scattered along Australia's 12,000 mile coastline. This is a land that has learned to use and depend on the aeroplane in many ways. On the farm, where the aeroplane is the farmer's insurance of a good harvest and his protection against the ravages of insects. The 
aeroplane also gives the farmer a fast delivery service for that very special freight. Its speed has enabled Australian businessmen to establish new markets and develop the old. In many areas of the Australian outback, the aeroplane has become a major form of transport for perishables and essential equipment. From the main air route, small feeder line aircraft carry people and freight into the most remote corners of the continent. The aeroplane also provides one of the world's most unique medical services, the Australian Flying Doctor. In New Guinea, the aeroplane has pushed the frontiers of civilization deep into the heart of the country. There are few roads in this rugged, inhospitable land. And in many highland towns and villages, the aeroplane is the only link with the outside world. Just as the flashing jet airliners of today have linked Australia with the world. Less than 50 years ago, Australia was the land down south isolated from the rest of the world by thousands of miles of ocean and weeks of travel in slow and stately ships. Today's jet airliners have given us a new geography of the air. They have made Australia a next door neighbor to the world. Distance has shrunk from miles to minutes. No Australian is now more than two days away from any part of the globe. Passagiers voor KLM vlucht 844 naar Amsterdam en Tokio via Biak worden verzocht zich naar de vertrekhal te begeven. The aeroplane has brought us new friends and new understanding. Per Singapore, Bombay en Roma. I signori passagieri sono pregati. On to 707 Jet Flight 571 for London via Singapore and intermediate ports. Now departing from the departure lobby. All aboard, please. Every day, a growing number of international airliners bearing the insignias and the people of many countries fly into Australian airports. Many of them flying the routes pioneered by Australian airmen, like the Smith brothers, Alm, Taylor, Hinkler and Hawker, and Sir Charles Kingsford Smith. It is a little known fact that the major oceans of the world, with the exception of the Atlantic, were first flown by Australians. However, the aeroplane's greatest contribution to Australian progress lies in the network of fast internal air services criss-crossing the continent from Perth to Brisbane, Port Moresby to Hobart, and linking the cities of the coast with the farthest outback settlement. All civil flying in Australia is controlled by the Commonwealth Department of Civil Aviation, 
a nationwide organisation of men and machines working around the clock to keep Australia's skyways safe. Officers of the Commonwealth Meteorological Bureau, stationed at all major airports, give each pilot the latest track and terminal weather information. DCA's Air Traffic Control Organization then gives the pilot a safe course and altitude to separate him from other aircraft and brings him up to date on the condition of the many safe flying aids along his route. No airliner can fly Australia's busy air routes until the pilot has his flight plan checked and approved by DCA. Once approved, the pilot cannot change his flight plan unless an emergency arises or he first radios air traffic control for permission. Details of the flight plan are recorded on a flight strip, which is kept as a continuous and accurate record of each airliner's progress, from departure to destination. While the passengers are being settled, the men up front are busy on the first of the four separate cockpit checks they must do before and immediately after takeoff. Fuel and ignition switches on. Integrated flight system check completed. Ultimate static source selector. Tank Alima Bravo, this is Melbourne Tower, right, runway 35, right, wind 350 five, degrees, 15. Ready to go and four giant engines with a total thrust of 35,000 pounds roar into reassuring life. Ready to go. Reassured by the knowledge that not only the engines, but every one of the thousands of individual parts of the airliner in which you travel are in safe flying condition. For every hour an airliner flies, up to eight man-hours are spent maintaining it in perfect flying condition. Everything is checked and rechecked, from radar to rivets, and there are no backyard mechanics in the airline industry. No engineer is permitted to work on aircraft until he has proved his skill and been licensed by DCA. And no aircraft, large or small, commercial or private, is allowed to fly unless it meets DCA's exacting safety standards. Nothing is left to chance. Special equipment, like this X-ray machine, is used to probe the airliner's structure for any flaws that may escape a human check. Every engine is regularly overhauled then tested under actual running conditions in special test cells before re-entering service. Tango Lima Bravo, taxiing. Tango Lima Bravo. TLB, the aircraft's registration letters, are used for all identification. TLB. Tango, Lima, Bravo. 
Unlike the practice in many overseas countries, DCA controls every aircraft, commercial, private or military, that flies Australia's busy air routes. This control is continuous, in good weather or bad, day and night. Thank you, Lima Bravo. Proceed to Sydney via the 037 diversion. Plane at flight level 250, not available due traffic. Cruise flight level 230. Air traffic control gives the pilot any last minute changes to his flight plan, made necessary by the changing traffic situation. Tango Lima Bravo. Proceed to Sydney by route 1. Wheels up and a smooth climb. For some, it is a moment of newfound confidence. For others, only a brief pause in the never ending routine of work. And there are those completely unconcerned by the entire business. On course for Sydney. And a moment's relaxation for the captain while his co-pilot takes over. Every pilot starts the long road to the cockpit of a modern airliner in small aircraft. Most do their early flying with one of the 50 aero clubs or commercial flying schools scattered throughout Australia. Thousands of Australians, young and old, men and women, learn to fly each year. Few have the skill and the endurance necessary to reach airline pilot standard. To earn his captain's license, a pilot must have at least 4,000 hours flying experience. Sometimes even the most determined trainee pilot finds it difficult to keep his goal in sight. Modern technology enables the pilot to do much of his training without even leaving the ground. In special equipment like this one million dollar jet simulator. One, two, uh, one, three. Stay here, don't quit. It's normal. Seat belt and no smoking. Now on. Emergency exit light. Arm. Anti-skid switch. Off. Low pressure ground start. Listen. Low pressure flight switch. Stay at three. Two, three. Start three. Starting three. But there is always actual flying training under the watchful eyes of special check captains licensed by DCA. Airline pilots also must go to school to learn about the aircraft they fly and keep abreast of the latest developments. I want you to realize, gentlemen, that the requirements of the lubricant of a gas turbine vary considerably from those of a reciprocating type of power unit. Inasmuch as on a gas turbine the bearings are not nearly as heavily loaded, nor is there any oil burned for in combustion. Uh, actually, the design of the gas turbine is such that the oil is not required in the combustion zone at all. In the normal course of airline operation, an emergency is rare, but pilots must learn special safety drills just in case.
Airline pilots must also learn the correct use of the many safe flying and landing aids provided by DCA, such as the approach light system for night and bad weather landings. But four and a half miles above the earth, the pilot does not have to rely solely on his skill and sight. Tango Lima Bravo, A2OD, ME Melbourne, 21. Flight level 210, climbing to 230. The pilot can pinpoint his precise position at any time by using a device called DME, Distance Measuring Equipment. DME is carried in every Australian airliner. Every airliner must radio its position to air traffic control as it overflies predetermined checkpoints. If an airliner is more than three minutes late in reporting, air traffic control immediately begins the first precautionary stage of its search and rescue procedure. Controllers maintain their continuous watch over every aircraft and keep in constant contact with pilots by means of a chain of mountaintop repeater stations similar to this station straddling the ridge of rugged Mount Barrow in northern Tasmania. Other stations, like the one at Landillo, just outside of Sydney, maintain contact with international airliners and ground stations as far away as Honolulu, Manila and Singapore. To the uninitiated, the jargon of DCA's air traffic control and communications centres is a seemingly meaningless jumble of words and symbols. Perth, this is Sydney. Quantas 732, departed Sydney. But every word, every phrase has its own importance. Each plays its part in enabling DCA to maintain its round-the-clock check on the progress of every Australian airliner. Cancel one, six, Echo Whiskey five, Alpha and Tango eight, Lima Bravo, this is Sydney eight, Control. One, six, I have a special Sydney weather. Thunderstorm activity in the Sydney area until 10 Darkness and poor weather are no longer the problems they were for our pioneer pilots. Tango Lima Bravo, this is Sydney Control. Proceed to South Stack. To the modern airliner pilot, the sky is simply a neat pattern of interlacing radio beams, which guide him safely and swiftly to his destination. Tango Lima Bravo, 8,000. Tango Lima Bravo. Call Tower 30 South. When an airliner is 30 miles from the airport, it is transferred to tower control. All aircraft are arriving normally, weather conditions are unaltered. In view of this, the expected approach times leave them as they are. Report carrying. That's right. Romeo Mike Charlie, this is Sydney Tower. Maintain 6000 QNH 10. Sydney Radar, this is Tango Lima Bravo. Heading is 010. Using radar, air traffic control can guide an airliner directly onto the airport's instrument landing system. Tango Lima Bravo, this is Sydney Radar, identified one five miles southwest of the field. This will be a right hand turn onto runway 07 ILS. Descend to 3000. Tango Lima Bravo, 3000. Known as ILS, this radio landing aid can guide a pilot in blind from approximately 10 miles out to a point in line with and only a few Tango hundred yards Bravo. from the end of the runway. Tango Lima Bravo, one zero miles from touchdown, closing the localizer from the right. Report when established. 
Tango Lima Bravo, established on localizer. Tango Lima Bravo, clear for final. Call tower 118 decimal 1, leaving 2000. Copy now, 800 yards. High intensity approach lights, stage 3, clear to land. Now the pilot changes over from instrument to visual flying by using the approach lights to line up his aircraft. Flaps down. Flaps down. Undercarriage down. Undercarriage down and lock. Three green lights showing. 500 horsepower. 500 horsepower set. And the airliner with engines purring along on reduced power gently eases its way into a perfect landing. This is the everyday routine of Australia's aviation industry. A routine which is repeated again and again. Every day of the year throughout Australia. A routine that keeps Australia's skyways among the safest in the world.